So we're going to be listening to Alphaville. No, we're not going to listen to Alphaville. Alphaville is the name of the band. Today we're going to be listening to Forever Young, an album by Alphaville. It was released in 1984, and I was born in 97. So I think it's pretty safe to say I am absolutely not familiar with this. Uh, that's not to say that you can't be familiar with albums that came out before you were born. That's just to say that the, the probability of me being familiar... You, uh, whatever. I, I just, I'm not familiar with it. I'm not familiar with Alphaville, especially not with this album. It's 10 tracks long and it's 43 minutes long. Now, at 43 minutes and 10 tracks, that means every song is about four and a half minutes long. And if you've been a fan of the channel for a while now, you know that my sweet spot for most tracks lies between three to three and a half minutes. So for most of these songs, if, if I start to feel like they're running a little too long or I got the gist of them already, I will be moving on to the next one because... The full version of this video will be out on the Patreon, and I just don't want people to just watch me listen to a song that I already don't want to be listening to anymore after like four minutes, and, and, and I'm just sitting here waiting for the song to end to move on. I don't want people to have to sit through that. So, with most of these tracks, uh, if I'm simply not enjoying the song, and I feel like I've gotten the gist of it, I'm going to move on to the next one. And uh, that should make for a more enjoyable reaction. It should keep me more engaging, more... Um, invested in the project because i'm not forcing myself to sit through songs i don't want to listen to so um with that said i i don't think that i will um dislike this album that said because this was requested via the the video that i did for invitation to hers not breakfast at hers invitation to hers and that was a, an absolutely awesome album that i really enjoyed and so i'm expecting this to be along those you know, similar kind of vibes, that really happy, sort of enjoyable, just fun and warm to listen to vibes. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy it. Um, but that said, if I, if I am not enjoying a song, I will be skipping it and moving on. Uh, just to keep things interesting, fresh, and short, quite frankly. I, I really don't have, you know, a whole lot of time today. So uh, I really am trying to get this video done and still keep it as enjoyable as possible. So... Did I even mention why I listened to this today? I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Hold on. Let me... <laughs> Oops. I'll throw this in at the beginning. I'll, I'll, I'll record this now and throw this in at the beginning. That's my bad. Totally forgot to tell you guys why I'm listening to this today. So I am working on a mixtape with some of my other subscribers uh, via the Discord server. If you're interested in participating, join the Discord server. There's a channel in there specifically for that. And uh, for the duration of, of our work on the tape, I'm running a promotion on the channel that you can get a video for an album of your choosing for $30 via the Streamlabs link that's in the description. And Charles Nadu, um, or, or is it Nadal? I don't know how to say it, uh, donated $30 and asked me to listen to this album. So that, that's why I, uh, I made this video. It was, it was a very specific request from somebody who sent in $30 to support the channel and our work on that mixtape. And so if you're interested in the video, um, you know, $30, Streamlabs link, take advantage of the promotion. In the message box, let me know the artist and the album name, and I will get the video out as soon as I possibly can. So Charles, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to take this clip and put it at the beginning of the video because I totally forgot to mention this at the start. <laughs> it's going to be a messy uh, a little bit a little messy but but we'll, we'll we'll work on it in the edit let's jump into it track one is a victory of love it's got a really cool swing to it though look at that bass line huh it's got a really nice little womp sound to it you know this is running the risk of sounding a little too empty but it, i still think it sounds fine look at those synths that came in in the background fire Cinematic feel to it. It's also a little creepy. I love the synths in the background doing that, man. Real quick, I think my dogs got into the uh, into the bathroom. Let me go check. Let's keep going. Yeah, this track sounds awesome. I love the vibe switch up too. Yeah, I like that, man. I think that the little bridge portion where it was just purely instrumental might go on for a little bit too long. If they trimmed that down, the track could be a little bit more concise. But the beginning where it sounds a little emptier and kind of creepy, 
uh, is really cool. It's kind of, kind of got like a cinematic feel to it. It's a really cool opening to the project where you're sort of introduced to this, you know, new sound. And then uh, they switch up the vibe like halfway through it and suddenly it becomes more groovy and it's like a really fun sort of a dance track vibe. So yeah, that's really cool. That's a great first track. Track two is Summer in Berlin. I like the melodies the synths are playing. I just don't like the way that all of them sound right now. Some of them sound a little too simple. These sound nicer. They have a little bit more edge to them. It's not really grabbing my attention like that first track though. I think the lead singer's performance on this is just a little too soft and not really um, as engaging as it was on that first track. So it's not grabbing my attention. It really feels like I have nothing to latch on to here, right? It feels like everything is just sort of background music and there's no main element of the song for me to, okay, to focus on, you know? It just feels like everything is just floating around. Like these sound like background vocals. It feels like we're just missing the lead. Really digging all the sound design though. Uh, except for the, the beginning of this track. It's got a really nice playful sound to it. I don't know that I'm super into it though. Um, listen, yeah, like I said, that one's just not really grabbing me. Uh, it's, it's not very interesting to me. Uh, I didn't really enjoy the synths at the beginning of the track. I felt like the, the design on them was a little too simple and easy. Uh, you know, I, I feel like the synths that come in along with the, the vocals, they have a little bit more edge to them. They've, they're a little just more interesting to listen to. Um, I also feel like parts of these tracks or parts of this track sound very childlike and playful and wonderful. And um, I'm not mad at it. I don't think it's bad. It's just it's it's again, not very interesting to me. Yeah, it's got a really lighthearted feel to it. And it, it feels like it's missing a little bit of power. It's missing a little presence, that one lead vocal that's going to grab our attention and, and, you know, give us the good stuff. I feel like I'm missing that. So. Summer in Berlin, not as good as A Victory of Love. Uh, track three, Big in Japan. This sounds cool. This is what I'm talking about. This is like, oh, okay, what comes next, you know? I'd love a little more volume on that vocal, man, but his performance is definitely more engaging than that last one. Dum, 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 dum. Love the bass. Yeah. I know this one. I recognize the chorus. Now that I hear the chorus, this song is major, you know, it's majorly famous. Um, definitely I've heard. Yeah, this is an anthem, you know? Yeah, I assume they're just gonna play us out with the chorus. Yeah, man, that one's an anthem, you know? I mean, it, I, <laughs> it's it's a little nostalgic for me because I remember getting put onto it, right, by my dad uh, when we used to listen to his favorite 80s music in, um, in the car and things like that. So it reminds me of when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, that one is catchy. Uh, I really like all the sound design on the synths. The plucky ones, the ones that sound like guitars and they're, they've got some distortion on them, the heavier sounding ones. Uh, that rolling bass line in the background is really dope. I like the little simple, you know, drum sounds. It's, it's you know, it's compared to a lot of nowadays' music where the drums are just such a main part of the track and they're so loud and, and sometimes overpowering even they're, they're just always up front in your face very powerful always knocking you on your feet uh knocking you off your feet excuse me uh it's just it's 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 weird sometimes when you're so used to listening to that to listen to something like this that was made in the 80s where it just simply lacks a whole lot of that loud powerful low end that we have nowadays you know there's no 
punchy kick. There's no booming bass on this. This is just... It almost sounds like the music is smaller. I'm a very visual person, and so where nowadays this music just sounds so huge and loud, this sounds like it's music box music, you know? <laughs> but it's still a great song. I, I totally appreciate it. Um, a lot of these tracks are on the longer side because they have, you know, kind of long instrumental bridges because people used to dance to this. This was played at parties, and so... Uh, they had those instrumental parts that you could just dance to. Um, it's really not bad. I mean, of, of course it's not bad. It's got 120 million plays. You know, you don't need me, some 24-year-old kid who's never heard this entire track all the way through <laughs> on his own to tell you that it's good. So, to Germany with love. Ooh. This might be the most present that we've heard, the kick and the snare. Um, and uh, the, the tone to the slap bass, I mean, there's, <laughs> it's, I like it. It's really bright, you know? It's not bad. It's, it's fun. I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea that, you know, that this isn't the sort of music that I listen to on a regular basis. So this is, this is not the kind of music that I come back to extremely frequently. You know, so that, I'm not going crazy over it. It sounds cool, you know. I, I can appreciate it for what it is and what it meant at the time. I'm sure this was really, you know, revolutionary and, and different. And, and this was like the thing to be listening to at the time, I'm, I'm sure. But just now, you know, I like it well enough. But it's, it's not blowing me away, you know. <laughs> it's not blowing me away. This wasn't made for me, you know what I mean? This was made for the people at that time. My dad was eight years old when this came out, and, and, and this must have, you know, made him jump around the room. It, for me, it's just, it's cool. It's cool. It's got a retro sound to it. I'm, I like it, you know, but I'm just not losing my mind over it. Especially this one. This, this track doesn't really sound like it's a huge deal to me, you know? This is just... Like, right now, I'm kind of bored, you know? Yeah, the bass player's going crazy. I like the background vocals, the harmonies, some th synthesizer strings. Really cool. Yeah, you know, that's it's just a nice track. I like the fact that that's the, the most present that we've heard, the kick and the snare. It's got a really nice, crisp, loud drum sound. Um, the tone to the, the slap bass is just like, there's really no really low end to it. It's very bright. Um, but I'm definitely not mad at it. And whoever was playing that bass, I don't know if it was an actual bass or, or if they were playing it on a synthesizer or whatever, but those runs were definitely um, difficult to pull off. So it takes a lot of talent, a lot of skill. Yeah, it's it's a cool track. It is a cool track. Fallen Angel. I don't know how well it holds up. I like these synths on the left side. Oh, now they're stereo. Okay, cool. It's so interesting to hear how differently they mixed the music back then, or at least how differently they mixed this album back then. You know, the focus is really heavily on the, uh, the synths. His vocals basically always take a back seat to these synths. This plucky 808, 808, oh man, I'm sorry. This plucky bass synth right now is, is like front and center, you know? The drum sounds come behind it, and then it's like, then it's his vocals, you know? Um, like I said, th these were made for sort of like a party setting, and so the lyrics probably didn't matter as much as just the energy of the song. The mix is just really, really strange to listen to. Uh, it's, it's very different. The fact that I'm not jumping out of my chair right now to my, my father and my uncle, this must be like blasphemous. You know, the fact that I'm not jumping on the bed behind me right now to this song. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. It's just <laughs> compared to nowadays' music, I just don't like it as much. If I had the memories that they have to pair with the music, I'm sure I would enjoy it more. Yeah, it's all right. It's, you know, I think I, I probably like To Germany With Love more than that one. Um, but all of these just kind of fall around the same, you know, area for me, which is where it's like, this isn't bad. There, there's nothing bad about it, but it's not as exciting to me as it would have been were I alive at the moment that it came out. You know, this right now, it just sounds kind of 
dated, <laughs> you know? It's not bad, it's just not what I'm interested in. Um, yeah, it's it's cool, though, it's cool. I could totally see, that. like, this sounds like a retro movie, you know? This sounds like the soundtrack to a movie that I used to watch as a kid with my dad. And uh, it, it's cool because, like, for, like, nostalgia purposes, it gives me that those same sort of feelings. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm not as interested in it because um, it just sounds kind of old. Now, next track is Forever Young. I don't know if there's anyone on the planet who has never heard this track. Clearly, this is not our first reaction to Forever Young. This track is a classic, you know. Sitting in a sand pit, life is a short trip. The music's for the sad. Forever young. Where's the lighters? Do you really want to? They all will be gone. Why don't they stay young? Rain swinging out of the blue. The light of palm trees. This is like that slow dance, high school prom sort of music. Yeah, you know. That's Forever Young. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to tell you whether it's good or bad, but that's got 330 million plays for a reason. Um, absolutely classic track. You know, it still sounds old, but I could still sit back and kind of vibe to it, you know, as I do other things. It, it reminds me of like, an, a, like a, a prom in a really old movie. I always feel like they play these sorts of tracks, and this is where the main protagonist finally gets the girl, you know, and they're slow dancing. Yeah. Track 7, In the Mood. Love the drum patterns here. This one has my attention more so than some of the other ones. I feel like this song should be ending right about now. I'm gonna skip ahead here. Yeah, I like the song. I just think it goes on for a little too long. Like, almost two minutes too long, I think. Track 8 sounds like a melody. Yeah, it's, man, I can't believe this track goes on for almost five minutes. It's two minutes in and I'm, I'm done, you know? it's I, Already I'm like looking around my room, I'm zoning out. This is just going on in the background, man. This is like, I'm gonna skip ahead for sure. A little faster paced here, okay. So apparently it's got a very long and epic sort of instrumental outro. Again, you know, that's meant for like a party setting and that's the ending portion where people are going to dance like crazy. I'm, I mean, I'm sitting in a chair. This is not the right setting to be listening to that. So, you know, it's just to me, it's just going to be a never ending loop of, you know, synths and strings. And so, uh, yeah, it's cool. Again, it's it's a very popular track, but it's it's just too long, you know, lies. I'm not sure about those harmonies. <laughs> I really, that was that note was tough. <laughs> nice, loving the keys. This is catchy. I like this one. I actually really like this one. That one's really sweet. It's fun. It's bubbly. It's catchy. You know the. The performance is really dope. <laughs> he hit some very impressive notes there with his falsetto. Um, yeah, that one's just a really fun one to listen to, and it doesn't go on for too long. That's like that's right in the sweet spot, three and a half minutes more so, uh, more or less. And so, um, yeah, that's you know that's a highlight for me. That's a highlight track. The last track is the Jet Set. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you can only understand like every five words.
I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. It's cute, you know? Is it another case of long instrumental outro? Yeah, that's another really long-winded uh, instrumental outro for, for the people who are dancing in a party setting. I'm not mad at that. I can understand why, you know, it has those really long outros. Um, especially for the fact that it is the outro of the, the album as well. But uh, it's just not fun to listen to when you're sitting by yourself in a room. So, <laughs> look guys, honestly, this is an album from 1984. I'm never going to be able to fully appreciate it for what it really is. Because when it came out, I wasn't born. I didn't, you know, experience that culture. I wasn't aware of any of the other music around that time to know whether this was incredible, what, you know, how well it stacks up against other music from that time. I can never fully appreciate it for what it is. Take everything I say with a grain of salt because of that, right? Obviously, this was not made for my generation you know it, it doesn't hold up as well as some other songs from the 80s right it's not bad you know there are some really major tracks on here like big in japan and obviously forever young but for the most part the other tracks on this album they're really well arranged you know the the sound design on, on the majority of the synths is really interesting we have the really distorted synths we have the ones that have the really low you know eight uh God damn, the really low bass sounds. We have some of the ones that have some more edge to them and, and distortion and, and, and brightness to them. Some that are very plucky, some that are more poppy and bubbly and sweet sounding. Just like they have a synth for everything on this. The string synths sound great. The brass synths sound great. And even the, the synthesized drums sound great. So, you know, the, the tracks are very nicely put together. The sound design's great. I'm not a huge fan of the way that the mix is on most of these tracks. I feel like the vocals should be louder and more far forward. But again, I listen to very different kinds of music from a very different era. So, um, you know, they, they put a, a very huge emphasis on the melodies and on the drums because this was meant to be played for people who were dancing and just partying and having a good time. I get that. I get that. I'm not mad at it. Okay, so... Uh, for the most part, this is technically very impressive. You know, um, the performances are great. The songs are, are really easy to listen to. You know, they're just kind of re repetitive and they go on and on in the loop in your head and the beats are groovy and, and they're fun. You know, they're fun tracks to listen to. Maybe not in this setting, you know, just, just for a review on YouTube like 40 years later, <laughs> you know. Uh but they're fun tracks. So, you know, is it for me? Am I going to come back to it? Probably not. But I can, I can appreciate, you know, I can appreciate the fact that this is a very nostalgic album for a lot of people. That this means a lot to many, many people out there who were children when this came out. Uh, and, and I can understand how, how this might bring you back. And this might have very positive, you know, memories associated with it for you. And so I think that that's really cool. I think that's really cool. It's bright, happy sounding music. I'm, I'm never going to be, you know, upset at that. So it was fun to listen to. It was fun to listen to. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't expect to wake up and listen to an album from 1984 today, but that's what I got. That's what life threw me today. And, and I, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. So, <laughs> you know, thank you for, uh, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're probably, you know, older, uh, uh, you know, from, from the generation that, that listened to this when it first dropped. Uh, thank you for watching some stupid, you know, 24 year old kid listen to this album that, that means so much to you. Uh, I hope I was able to entertain in some way. Honestly, I, I don't know. Yeah, and thank you everybody for watching the video. I really appreciate you guys. Everybody stay safe. I will see you guys later. Until then, peace out.